Welcome to Lab Safety and Equipment 101. My name is Diana Wing, and I'll be showing you what to do in the lab. And I'm Anne, I'm going to show you what not to do in the lab, and my neck really hurts. Anyway, let's get started. Ow! Rule number one, make sure to know what everything is. This includes eye washing stations, fire alarms, fire extinguishers, disposal bins, broken glass bins. <laughs> Rule number two, make sure to wear closed toed shoes. If you don't, you'll probably end up dropping something on your foot and that wouldn't be very good, would it? Rule number three, make sure to remove any loose clothing, necklaces, and bracelets. Earrings are okay to an extent. Okay, and I got the weakest. Gosh. Rule number four, make sure to tie up your hair. If you don't, it could catch on fire, it could fall on acid, you can contaminate the material. And watch out, your hair might catch on fire. Rule number five, make sure you wear safety goggles at all times. If you don't, you could probably get something in your eyes that will cause you to go blind. Sorry, sir. Rule number six, absolutely no horseplay in the lab. Get low when the whistle go. Rule number nine, do not return any unused substances back into their beaker or container. They should be disposed of. I always say, I memorize it and then when we call them a Rule number 10, do not eat or drink in the lab, especially in one of the equipments. Hmm. Rule number 11, make sure to properly sniff the chemicals. You should do it by using the wafting technique in order to avoid smelling too much and coughing and dying. This Esther is supposed to smell nice. <coughs> Rule number 12, make sure to properly check the heat of something by showing the back of your hand to it. If you directly touch it, you might get burned. Okay, when I have my iPhone, it do the same thing. Do you think it's cool? Mm. Rule number 13, report any injuries or accidents to the teacher. Anne, ah, oh, can you get, can you get Vega? I think it's sprained my ankle. Yeah, you know, one moment. Anne! <gasps> Rule number 14, if you drop the acid, pour some base on it. If you drop the base, Pour some acid on it. By doing so, you will neutralize the chemicals, making it safe to wipe up. This will be really important to know during your acid-based titration lab. Rule number 15. Label everything. And read their labels carefully. Rule 16. 
team, do not touch anyone. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I regret not going in here. <laughs> Rule number 17. Make sure to dispose of waste in proper waste bins. If you are unsure where a certain waste is supposed to go, ask Mr. Vega. Well, I'm done. Rule number 18, when you finish the lab, make sure to clean everything up. Wash your hands. And now you can leave. There you go. These are beakers. They are used in multiple labs. You will use them to measure the volume of a liquid. They are the least accurate sources of measurements. Graduated cylinders are also used to measure the volume of a liquid. These are more accurate than a beaker and a flask. The Erlenmeyer flask is used to measure volume of a liquid. This is a round bottom flask. It is used to measure a large amount of volume. These are pipettes. They are used to measure volume more accurately than a graduated cylinder. The item to the left is called bowl. It can also be These a These are barrette clamps, which holds up barrettes. Barrettes are the most accurate when it comes to measuring volume. You'll most likely use these in titration labs. The item to the right is the filter flask, and the item to the left is the Buchner funnel. It is used to filter out substances, and it's used in the gravimetric analysis lab. These are funnels. You can use them as filter, as long as you have filter paper. You can also transfer a substance from one container to another. The item to your left is a watch glass. It is used to observe substances. The item in the middle is a crucible and its lid. It is used to hold heated substances. You will use a crucible in the percent hydrant lab. The item to the right is an evaporating dish. It is used to observe evaporating substances. Well, when carrying a beaker, use a rubber tongue. However, if the beaker has been heated, use a metal tong. When carrying a test tube, you must use the test tube holder. The eyedropper is used to transfer small drops of water into another beaker. The utility clamp is meant to elevate test tubes. Test tube racks hold multiple test tubes at a time. Test tubes hold solutions. The test tube brush is meant to clean the test tube. The cap closes the test tube. These are thermometers. They are used to measure temperature. Thermometers will be mainly used in the calorimetry this lab. This is a striker. It is used to light the Bunsen burner. A Bunsen burner is used to heat up items. Congratulations, Lobos. You, you have, have completed lab safety and equipment 101. And... Let's not say. Ain't no when the whistle go.